leaving everybody. Good evening, everybody. This is the DCN. Been a while since I've been on. Uh, people been asking where I've been and why I haven't done a live. Well, one thing, I don't like looking at myself. And also, I've been busy and taking a, a break um, from politics for a little while. And um, I have decided that it's time for me to uh, come back. Especially when people have been requesting um, my input on uh, several, di several different issues. Um, Dating back to the uh, the gun bill and, 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 and all those sorts of things. Um, but tonight I'm going to cover three areas very quickly. Uh, I'm not going to be up here long. I am broadcasting live from my office. Well, my wife took my office, so I normally am in uh, working out of my bedroom. Got my bedroom set up um, where I do my video and all that kind of stuff so I can uh, be in the bed and doing several different things um, on my laptop, making videos, uh, delving copies um, of the events that I have done. I want to start out with the first topic which is the Democratic Party convention that's supposed to be held August the 15th, uh, from what I understand, with the communication. But I'm going to go back just a little bit uh, when it comes to the Edgecombe County Democratic Party, because anybody that knows me know that I am a diehard Democrat and has been uh, attending Edgecombe County Democratic Party meeting since the late 80s, serving um, at the precinct level on the county executive committee, and back in 1996, um, 97, served as the, um, I call it intern, but you let other folks tell it, like Roosevelt Higgs, that it was not, but I served the uninspired term of the chair that went out and the first vice chair stepped down. Well, one of them stepped down because they was running against another Democrat, so they had to come out because it was not a nonpartisan race. It was a partisan race. And then the uh, second vice um, had had hip surgery. I was the third vice. And the night of the meeting, I'll never forget. Um, the late, great Tyrell Knight approached me and said, we have got to, you have got to move up because we don't want Reverend Roosevelt Higgs. I said, brother, I don't want to do it, but I will because I'm in the third vice chair and um, I, 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 you know, it, it's my duty to move up as vice chair. So I did. He nominated me. I won, I served um, up until 1998, um, and I was, had filed a reference school board at the time, but because I, because it was a nonpartisan race, I could do both, but I, I, I spent my time um, um, working on, from the county chair position, because we had just appointed uh, Sheriff Knight, and then um, we were trying to get Carol White in as clerk of court. But um, let me just give you a little history on that time. Well, before I leave that, um, during the time I was in the office, I had to fight. Well, I didn't have to fight. But uh, Reverend Roosevelt Hayes kept coming for me. And the second vice, well, I forget what um, Mayor Brian Carr was, was at that time, what position he held. I think it was the, the first or second vice. And he told me that, uh, remember when the county party is not in session, the county officers, which are 
the six county officers, the chair, the uh, the chair, the first, second, third, secretary, and treasurer um, can meet and they can do things when the party's not in session. So that's what I did. I uh, um, held the last big uh, uh, in the, uh, in the WCP, uh, uh, Democratic Party meeting, we used to have meetings, uh, banquets, and, and etc. at the uh, National Guard Armory in Tarboro. Um, my good friend Anthony Young, he helped me put it together during that time. I think he was working with, uh, uh, who was it? I think it was Governor Mike Easley, I believe it was at the time. And then the next year he worked with uh, Senator John Edwards. So um, he helped me put it together. We made it happen. Had a great event. Um, during the time I um, held a position, I had meetings. My meetings was one hour long. Um, I'll never forget the Democratic women was not me. They came back, started meeting, and, and they was on a roll until um, I, I, um, I didn't choose to run for the uh, position when it came up. But my good friend, Miss Elizabeth Ory, nominated me at the convention. I didn't turn it down only because of her, because I was uh, one of her, her mentors. And um, when it comes to the political party, and um, other folk, they said they had committed to Roosevelt Higgs, so they supported him. I had no problem with that because I was not seeking a position anyway. Plus, I tell people all the time, um, Holding the county chair position, you're supposed to be neutral. Whereas, as I was a third vice chair, I can support and, and do basically what I wanted to do. I don't like titles that will hold me down. Um, now, if other folk out here doing what I do, um, I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. But if I'm one of a few that, that speak up, so I gotta have a voice. But, um, Leading up to the convention that's supposed to be held on, on the 15th, well, LaShawn Jenkins stepped down about a year ago, and Natalie Best moved up as the first vice, as, as the chair. Um, what's supposed to happen was she was supposed to call a meeting in 30 days, and we elect. A, a, a chair to fill his unaspired term that never happened. Okay, throughout the election, primary, during the election, there were no meetings. Um, kept contacting her. Um, this year, in January, start contacting her about the the precinct meetings. Um, still no no information, no meeting before that time. Uh, we had the precinct meetings, and I'm learning now that only five had met. But then I'm getting another number. I got another number yesterday. It says someone turned in their package on yesterday. But the, the um, deadline was back in March. So um, that's questionable. As if they could vote during the convention, because it's supposed to be in at a time that matter. However, been seeking information, couldn't get any. I asked for a list of the precinct chairs that have met, have not gotten it, and, and trust me, I'm not the only one that has been asking. There are emails out there, there's communication out there, so it's not only me. And I have been asking because people have been asking me, although I want to know. The last two to three conventions have just been crazy. So I was letting the chair know that we need to make sure that we have a smooth convention coming up. But I don't know where we're at. But anyway, whatever comes down on Saturday, I will be prepared to challenge the process because no one has been um, notified other than whoever they notified 
However, I do know the delegates has, has not been notified because um, they're not on the email list. The delegates are, uh, you would have to reach them by postal mail. That's the only uh, way to reach them because they, they didn't put an email address. They just got their post, post, um, mailing address. So I know they have not been notified. You know, the delegates. I've spoken to some of the elected officials and they say they have not. I asked for the agenda and I received something on yesterday uh, saying a proposed agenda, but I have not opened it because I just ain't got time to look at it and, and, and then I have to challenge that. So whatever's in there, I'll be ready on Saturday. So that's where that stands. However, um, it was brought to my attention that on WNCR TV, that Bronson Williams said on yesterday that he was going to nominate me for the chair position. Well, we don't even talk like that. I speak, keep it moving. But if you're going to nominate somebody, you would think they would uh, call first and see are you running. Why would you tell people that you're going to nominate someone and you don't even know whether they are running or not? So I have a problem with that. But I believe that was a setup. I believe that announcement was for Roosevelt Eats to call in and try to discredit me as he had been doing, trying to do over the years, um, calling in, talking about me being the chair and, and all that kind of stuff and attacking our other black leadership and and that's the reason why I come I stop uh, dealing with those guys over at Service on TV and um and um because I, I, I spoke to the brother and asked him to change the format and I had talked to people it just was not me that had an issue with the format. But anyway, that's his show, do whatever you wanna do. I stopped listening to it, looking at it around two years ago, so hey, no problem. But um, the process normally works when someone is running, they have their own person to nominate them, and then that person uh, gets to speak about the person. So why would I want someone to nominate me that we don't even communicate? I, I, don't, I don't get it. But that's what... Um, Black folk have to deal with, when some white folk tune in, every morning, the morning drama show. With all that's going on, um, every morning, people don't have anything else to look at, so they tune in to the daily morning drama show. But that's all right, do what you do. Um, but we will see on Saturday how this uh, convention goes, so stay tuned. It will be, <coughs> excuse me, it will be um, virtual, so um, let's see how can we make that be live so people that were not and is not aware of the meeting will be able to tune in, so I figured that one out. Um, now I want to move to the mayor apology for Councilman Andre Knight, last Monday night I attended the Edgecombe County Commissioner's meeting. Um, I didn't know that there was going to be a Rocky Mountain City Council meeting because they had rescheduled it and I got the notification from YouTube. But um, I attend the Rocky Mountain City, I mean the uh, Edgecombe County Commissioner's meeting because that's the night it's held on and not the Rocky Mountain City Council. I went that night especially, but I was going anyway because uh, Tanisha Lewis, uh, the coach from Elizabeth City University, won the CIAA and they were on the agenda to receive a resolution. And I get to the uh, meeting and nobody's there from my family. And I thought that was quite interesting. Um, I asked them or were they notified and Leonard Wiggins said, well, they didn't know they know now, but I don't know what he meant by that unless he meant by 
of me doing their videos live because WHIG TV was there, but they don't do it live. So I'm assuming he's saying if they didn't know, they know now because I was videoing. But I thought that was very shabby not to invite the coach. I'm quite sure she probably would have came. Probably would have brought uh, some of the team on. But anyway, I know she would have came. Her family's here. Her church is here. Her dad is a um, is a commissioner of 30 some years in Bakersfield. Her mom is a minister. Her aunt is her uh, minister. Tanisha is a minister. Um, so that was just very, um, I, I mean, it made no, no sense how you do a resolution with someone and then do not make your family aware. But um, before I could get home, I started getting messages about the city council meeting, the um, public comments when Troy Davis went up to the podium and called out the black, the five black council about the, um, supporting the judicial center over housing. And he talked and talked and left the podium. And um, he, um, I think he said, damn, he was tired or something. something he said, so he, he used some kind of curse word. He had to look at the video. Uh, uh, it's on my page, it's on my YouTube page, on my Facebook page. It's on the Rocky Mountain City Council um, page, that's where I shared it from. But anyway, yeah, I, uh, Andre Knight came back and responded. And he made it clear that three of the five blacks, he, Richard Jonah, and uh, River Blackwell, did not support that. It was put on the agenda. He called the the new city uh, manager and asked him to take it off. He took it off. But I'm having a hard time with folk, especially um, um, uh, Adrian Copeland, Copeland, everybody you say her name, white female, come up and try to um, uh, respond to the conversation that Troy had and Andre responded because she didn't like the way Andre responded. Well, first of all, Andre is a grown man. Uh, most black folk, especially myself, we talk loud so you can hear us. We talk loud because when we know what we're talking about, when we speak the truth to power, we are confident, so we say what we mean and mean what we say. It has been a long time coming. Andre should have been done that. It makes no sense that the mayor, who's supposed to be in control of the meeting, read the minutes of what's supposed to happen during public comment, but he allowed them to come up and disrespect the city council members, especially the black ones, because I don't see where they come up there and disrespect the white ones. But the mayor, when he started out talking about the five black councilmen, he should have stopped him. But no, what does he do? He does a letter of apology for Andre Knight, a grown black man. That's an insult to me. Because like myself, Andre can speak for himself, has been doing it, and will continue to do it, and it is documented. Um, back when they were not recording the means, I've been recording for years. I don't get paid to do it. But I tell you that don't blame me. One, I'll never forget it. When he uh, responded to uh, Johnny Cunningham and some others back then. So I named this one, Don't Blame Me Too, when he responded to Troy Davis. Um, it, again, it, it's an insult that the mayor would um, do a letter of apology on behalf of the counselor because of Andre Knight responding to Troy Davis. 
I don't see where he was out of line. I don't see no need for an apology. Because um, if you disrespect someone, you need to understand that grown folk respond like grown folks. I don't think Troy was ready. And Adrian neither. And um, if the mayor would do his job, then it wouldn't be a problem. It would eliminate a whole lot of mess, a lot of disrespect at the city council meeting. When will it end? I think it will only end when the, when the mayor is replaced. And that's what folks need to be concentrating on. It is a shame that with all that's going on in America and even here locally, that we are, uh, are, are having to have discussions about folk coming down to disrespect and elect the officials. It's just like it's being done on the daily morning shows, both of them. WNCR TV and WHIG TV. It's time for black folk to say enough is enough. The reason why it keeps happening is because folk are not saying anything publicly. You talk about it behind closed doors. You talk about it on the phone. But you see, this stuff happened publicly, so you need to be responding publicly. So all of you who allow this to continue, you are part of the problem. And then you allow them with someone like myself, uh, Teresa Austin Stokes, and others who speak publicly, then you allow them to come for us. You all have got to start taking a stand. It is enough going on in the area that we don't need to be concentrating on mess that ain't even important. Unnecessary mess. Until we come together as a black folk and stop allowing other folk to try to, to um, divide us, we can get somewhere. You know, I get so sick and tired of folks talking about uh, Rocky Mountain is a black majority, but it's a downtown. It's a, 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 a Rocky Mountain. It's a Rocky Mountain Mills. Well, hell, do you not understand? If you're the black majority, all that belong to you. If you're the black majority, then while you are focusing on mess, you need to understand you got the power. If you would just come together. You don't have to agree with me on everything, but that which you agree with me on, you need to say it publicly. So I challenge you, black folk especially, and white folk who um, um, say they are about truth and um, unite, then you need to take a stand. Now, you can drop that mess about Andre and the light bills. Nothing has come out of that. Until something come out of that, then it's a non-issue. I haven't seen his light bill. I haven't seen anything from him nor uh, uh, the governor. I mean, not the governor, but the, um, the state auditor. So until that is um, uh, come up again, and something can be proven, then you need to let that mess go. When folk bring it up, you need to tell them, shut up. You don't want to hear it. Because we have enough issues that we need to deal with in Edgecombe County and Nash County. Uh, you got the school demerging, uh, separation, whatever you want to call it, coming up. You ought to attend your county commissioner meeting, Nash County, Edgecombe County, your school board meets Edgecombe County, Nash County. There's a lot that you could be doing. So 
But what you need to do is stop being full. Get you sidetracked and get involved in your county parties, Edgecombe and Nash. Because I am 60 years old. I ain't got time for a whole lot of foolishness. I started out in politics in my early 20s, and I have come too far to turn around now. I'm good. I can handle myself. I got resources. But it ain't never been about me. And it is never going to be about me. I am going to be a voice for the voiceless. That's what I am going to do until the day I die. Yeah, I took a little break, but I'm back now. If anybody got a problem with that, that's a you problem. But trust me, I'm not going to sit back and allow folk to make decisions on my behalf and the folk that I speak for behalf and not say a word. I understand some people are afraid to speak publicly, but I'm that one. So, um, I think you all probably have got the message. And, hey, I am accessible. You can reach me. I'm all over the internet. My phone number's out there. My email is out there. My three websites is out there. I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. Got any problem? Contact me. Because I hold folk accountable and I ask others to hold me accountable. And I have been saying over the years that when you want to run for something in Edgecombe County, or you are well, or whether you live in Edgecombe County, but if you are representing me in Edgecombe County, then you need to talk to me. Not because I am nobody, but because I am somebody when it comes to politics. I am a community actor, a political actor. I am a precinct chair. I serve on the um, uh, North Carolina State Executive Committee. So if you don't think that means anything, then so be it. But I will not allow you to disrespect me, nor my leaders. So I again challenge you to stand up and let's move forward and stop being afraid to speak on local issues and people we got to hold each other accountable. So until the next time, have a good night.